Welcome to this English Champion Book Recommendation. I'm Matt Spivey. 2020 was a strange year, with disease, political activism, an election between two septuagenarian idiots, canceled sports, canceled concerts, canceled celebrities. But there was one thing in 2020 that remained consistent with the years that preceded it. And unless action is taken, 2021 and the years to come may not be much different. As an English professor, I read a lot, and the best book to come out in 2020 was Live Not by Lies by Rod Dreher. It's a powerful and succinct examination of an American culture in danger of being overrun by what he calls a soft totalitarianism. The title comes from a 1974 essay written by Russian dissident Alexander Solzhenitsyn, and Dreher's book uses the voices of Russians and Eastern Europeans who survived the communism that spread after World War II to warn Americans that we are on the same destructive path they witnessed firsthand over the last 70 years. Dreher calls it soft totalitarianism by way of referencing a passage from Neil Postman that I use in my own classrooms on the difference between George Orwell's 1984 and Aldous Huxley's Brave New World, both novels I reread in 2020 as well, where the overt violence and oppression of Orwell's vision of the future is less likely than Huxley's comfortable and acceptable form of totalitarianism. We will get so used to our conveniences and entertainments our consumerism and our individualism, that we won't notice or won't care, that we are watched, tracked, weakened, and manipulated nearly every minute of every day by corporations and political institutions, that we don't see our rights gradually eroding, that we've been taught in our school systems to love the state and hate each other, that we haven't heeded the warning signs offered to us by the many refugees of communism found in this book. This is not new, which is why 2020 wasn't that unique, and 2021 doesn't seem to be giving us any signs that things are changing. In the first half of the book, Dreher provides the signposts that eerily reflect the Soviet totalitarianism of previous decades, as well as the current totalitarianism of China. Mass surveillance, manipulation of language, distortion of scientific truths, infringement upon human rights such as speech and faith, social punishment for not conforming to the ideology of the state. In communism, jobs may be taken away, artistic creativity may be censored, even access to the marketplace may be denied. People may be prohibited from buying certain products or living or traveling where they want. Isolation and seclusion are the only ways of life. Sound familiar? These punishments all existed in Russia and other places where communism ruled, and they are already here in some forms. In the second half of Dreher's book, after outlining the problem, he offers solutions. He relates the stories of communism survivors in their own words, shows the bravery they exhibited in not only standing up to their own government, but in inspiring, educating, and protecting their families and neighbors. Small groups would secretly meet, the survivors tell us, to discuss history, to tell stories, share works of art, and feed and nurture one another. They vigilantly held on to their heroes from both fiction and history. They would save their culture. The people and ideas of the past must not be forgotten, they said. The state can only have power over people who are blank slates. When people remember the stories that remind them who they are and what values they believe, they can withstand any threat, and they will refuse to repeat lies. It's not always easy to stand up for truth, but not repeating a lie is a powerful first step, hence the title of the book. But most importantly, these dissidents would strengthen each other with Christianity their faith giving them the hope to look beyond their current oppression and embrace a freedom in Christ that no government can ever take away. They memorized entire books of scripture when Bibles were banned. They wrote essays and letters sharing their faith. They prayed even while being arrested, and after years of imprisonment, they prayed daily for their captors' forgiveness. Their faith sustained them, and that is what they brought to America when they escaped. And they are the ones most saddened and frightened by what they currently see. They've lived through it. They've survived the famines and the gulags and the genocides. They've faced real oppression, not the mostly made-up kind complained about here in America. And they've warned us where we are headed. Not everyone needs to be highly educated or a person of faith to be courageous enough to stand up to tyranny. But an education of culture, mostly found in the humanities of history, literature, and philosophy, and a resilient love for God and other people are the best tools for preparing for what seems to be on the horizon. 
Will 2021 be a year in which soft totalitarianism continues its steady march? Well, here at my university, where in my English classes I teach in the ways those faithful Christian refugees from communism recommend, I'm going to do my best to stop the lies. And by checking out this great book, Live Not by Lies by Rod Dreher, you can too. The most powerful book of 2020. Thanks for watching.